Venga means let's go in Spanish. Vamos, venga, it's the same. Vamos, venga, 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 venga. Hello, my name is Daniel Olivella, the chef owner of Barlata Tapas Bar in Austin, Texas. I've been cooking for about 40 years, mostly in the United States. I've opened 27 restaurants in many cities. And I became um, kind of addicted to plant-based food. First of all, because I'm a cyclist. I do about 10,000 miles a year on my bicycle. If eating is important to you, it should be as important as to prepare yourself ahead of time. This is a few things I would recommend, obviously myself as a chef, professional chef. I got plenty of knives, got plenty of pots and pans and colanders and whatever you cannot imagine. I collect them, I collect them in my garage. Some days I think, I hope one of my kids becomes a cook because I don't know what I'm gonna do with all this. But I'm just gonna go over a few of the things I think they're key to be successful in your experience. One of the, the first things I'm gonna start talking, it's a base of your performance. A base of your performance, a base of your prep would be a nice cutting board. After that, I would give a lot of importance to a good set of knives. I got this knife here, very inexpensive. This is probably a $12 knife. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars. Sometimes you can find very inexpensive things. This is a good, a good knife to bone things. A good serrated knife, it's super important. A nice one or two knives that you're able to chop things, that you're able to cut things, that you're able to make things, mince things into small, in small parts. I think that's also very important. Also, a very small knife that you can hold in your hand. It's gonna help you peel things. It's gonna help you to shape little things. A spatula, like this, there is never anything left around, around the edges of the bowls. A few spoons, in this case, I got two metal spoons, one with holes, one without. A wooden or plastic spoon, make sure you can stir everything properly. Nice whisk, it's always great for making dressings, to mix up everything. This is one of my favorite things, you know, a lot of people don't have one. I like to grate always some kind, kind of citrus on top of my dishes. So this is a great to, to, to grate some lemon, some lemon zest, some lime, some oranges. Peeler, very inexpensive and great to have. Peel potatoes, peel carrots, peel many things. Something to protect yourself. Nice set of tongues. This is very important because you always want to have a distance between you and the oven, you and whatever you're cooking. Scissors, always handy. You know, always you get a bag, you get a pocket of something, boom, you gotta cut it. I'm sure you will have one of these. Can opener, super important. Okay, those will be the, the few tools that be great in your, in your drawer and in your, in your home. Then a few measuring cups. You know, is it often, like when I wrote my cookbook, Catalan Food, I was um, surprised of how much the tutorial, how much they were going into detail of ounces, of cups, so it's important to have a few sets of measuring cups for yourself as well. And then, just to f finish here, a nice colander, always good. And then a few, a few sets of pots and pans. I like to work with non-stick pans myself. We got a couple in here, and then a couple of pots. I got these two here, just get three, a bigger one than this. And then I'm gonna show it full of onions, like this, you can see how, how many they fit in here, but get yourself a half a dozen of different size bowls. Then you'll be ready not only to cook my food, but to cook whatever you want. As important as it is to, to have your uh, kitchen equipment to, to cook properly, is it almost more important to have the right pantry in your house? This will al allow you to improvise in the last minute and to experiment with your own self. It is often that I, I buy cookbooks and I follow recipes, but I end up always giving it my own twist. And I acquire that by having a great pantry in my house. This is only a few ideas that I would like to showcase today. So we're gonna start here in the front row. We have a bunch of different spices. I just pulled six of them today. We have paprika here, Hungarian or Spanish paprika is great. We have pimenton here, which is a type of paprika with the particularity that the pepper has been fire roasted and smoked. So this is a great spice, especially for vegetarian dishes that sometimes they tend to lack a little bit of depth. I make a vegetarian pie at the restaurant and I always uh, season this with uh, uh, olive oil that I make with uh, pimenton. Um, we have some um, cayenne pepper here, always great to spice your food. Some cumin, I love cumin in my garbanzos, in my beans, in my lentils. And then black pepper, ground black pepper, and salt. 
one of my enemies, but one of the things that you cannot live without. It's always often that, oh, what's missing this dish? Salt, boom, a little bit of salt. It's always, don't abuse of it. That's my recommendation at least. We're gonna move here backward now. And then we got some uh, dry fruits. We got some currants and some raisins. So that twist of sweetness, it's always great to find, especially in plant-based dishes. We got some um, pumpkin seeds. There is sesame seeds, there is uh, sunflower seeds. We also got hazelnuts and almonds. They're always great, as I showed before, to pound them or for crunchiness, for flavor, for crunchiness. I think they were great. And then here we got some chai seeds. I think they're also crunchy, they're great. Some dry peppers. I think it's always great to have a few of those in your, in your refrigerator. And then some type of grains. We have a mix of lentils in here. Always good to have lentils, garbanzos, white beans. Even if you have some canned ones, it's great to put them in water and cook them. You're gonna get better flavor. And then a bunch of things that they, they're gonna help you to enhance as well the flavor. We had some honey here. We got a couple of vinegars here. This is a, um, a blood orange vinegar. We have some rice vinegar. I think acidity, there's a few things I always try to find in my food. It's crunchiness, fat, and acidity. I think it, it helps you a lot to, to, to fill up the, your mouth. Spicy oil is always great. If you have some habanero sauce, especially here in Texas, everybody seems to love spicy food. I like spicy food a lot. I just got a can of tomatoes here. Always great to have some tomatoes to make a last minute tomato sauce. I always have a bunch of cans at home. And then one of my favorite things in the world is extra virgin olive oil. I could not live without this. My son, now 80 years old, every morning he's got his toast with ajo y aceite, garlic and olive oil. I think it's great. This is the fanning agent on my food. One of the things I'm, I'm very particular, it's about cooking slow. And one of the things I'm even more particular about is about sweating my onions. As I mentioned before, there is a few important things in the food when I eat. One is crunchiness, which is texture, acidity, and then fat. I think food without fat is like listening to jazz with an acoustic, without acoustic bass. So that acoustic bass in my food is my sweated onions, especially in my plant-based food. So I'm gonna show you how I do my onions, okay? It's, it is very simple. We're gonna cut a few of them, peeling them first, and always making sure that the head of the onion stays together. Otherwise, when we, you cut the onion, it's gonna fall apart. And you wanna dice them very small without having to go back and forth and without having to chop them. It is often that I see my cooks chopping them and I don't like to chop my onions because I think by chopping them, you get rid of a lot of the the water that they carry. So the less you chop them, I think the better it is. And I say sweating because we're gonna see how the steam of the onions are gonna cook them. And at the restaurant, we always have a big bowl of sweated onions because that's the base of my paellas, the base of the soups. So once we have the onion, you see I kept all the heads together. We're just gonna do little stripes. Important that the knife is sharp, as you can see. crying. Okay, once we have the onion already, we don't have to do anything else now. Just gotta go up and down. We cut them very, very thin. Once you reach the point that you feel you might cut your fingers, you flip them over, okay? Flip them over again. You cut them again from top to bottom. So this is what we want, little pieces of onions. You see, you don't have to do much because once we cook them, they're gonna kind of melt into little pieces. Oh la la. We're gonna do two of them, should be enough. Mm. So now we got the onions chop here and this would be probably the first thing I would do um, when I start cooking. I always start preparing my onions. So I'm going to put some extra virgin olive oil here, a nice la layer of, of olive oil in the bottom. I'm going to put this on the heat and once it's a little hot we're going to dump the onions and just cover them 
I'm going to put a little bit of salt and then we're just letting them for about 20 minutes, stirring them once in a while. We're just going to then sweat them. And once you do this, if you, if you keep them refrigerated, they're good for a, for a good week at least. You don't want to wait for the oil to be too hot, so you want to sweat them. So the color, it's not very important. You don't have to make them dark, you know. I, I actually like them when they're white. I'm going to lower the heat, add a little salt, stir them up and just cover them with the same bowl. You want to cover them with some of the olive oil. You can see they, they got olive oil on them. And now I'm going to lower the heat as much as I can and I'm just going to cover them. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. I'm just going to put a little bit of salt on them, stir them up again. It is important, I think, to understand too that food, um, as much as we always running and we seem not to, not to have a lot of time, it is important that you spend your time cooking properly. So we're going to let them here. We're going to come back in five minutes, stir them up, five more minutes, and after 20 minutes you have your sweated onions.